Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking about understanding and setting up user registrations for WordPress. My name is James Tryon. I'm the uh, LearnDash training specialist. I've been using WordPress since 2007. I'm the lead organizer of WordCamp Orlando. Uh, I'm the ambassador of Wapus, which is the unofficial mascot of WordPress. Uh, I have three lovely kids and a wife, uh, but honestly, I would rather be playing with Legos and Transformers half the time, but don't tell them that. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, or if you're here, you probably found me on, uh, already know who I am through the Facebook group. Uh, today, this is what we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to understand how WordPress and LearnDash handle user registration. We're going to be reviewing and setting up the LearnDash login, registration, and pop-up. And uh, I want to stop right here real fast. This whole thing's going to be about 30 minutes plus, uh, you know, Q&A. But realistically, the Learn Dash registration pop-up, it'll take under five minutes. So that'll be fun to show. Uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, some other free and premium registration options. We're going to have some tips for a better user experience, uh, examples of view cases, some demos, and whatever questions uh, everyone here might have. So understand how, understanding how WordPress handles user registration. Uh, LearnDash, uh, LearnDash user registration is actually through WordPress. So what I mean by that is LearnDash doesn't really have a user, a user registration system. LearnDash leverages WordPress. Uh, LearnDash sits on top of WordPress as a plugin, and it's meant to work with your infrastructure uh, your environment. Uh, we can do more, but it's designed to work with whatever you need it to do and whatever systems you're already in, you know, integrated with. So for that point, LearnDash itself really just leverages the WordPress uh, login. It's the same that you use to start your website. It's the same if you were to subscribe to someone's blog. It's even the same if you were to uh, sign up through WooCommerce. Uh, all those are the, the actually the same system. Uh, we're just leveraging what's already there and trying to make it easier uh, for the users. So what about the pop-up? Uh, as Justin was saying earlier, with the advancement of LearnDash 3.0, the new uh, design, the new focus mode, uh, all the refactoring, we also got a fantastic pop-up that helps with login and user registration throughout the site. Uh, so next we're gonna talk about how to set this up a little bit, and then we're actually gonna do it. Uh, swap back and forth between the slides and some demos uh, throughout the rest of the presentation. So as far as the LearnDash pop-up goes, uh, <laughs> the documentation says eight easy steps. It's really not that difficult. Uh, once you have it turned on, you have your LearnDash turned on and activated, you want to make sure you're using the LearnDash theme, the 3.0. So this would be your LearnDash settings. Your dropdown is going to have your, your legacy theme or your LearnDash 3.0, unless you made your own, uh, it would be here. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you have your login and registration toggled on, and you want to upload your own logo. Uh, you don't have to do the logo, uh, but I would recommend you know, uploading your logo. And again, you want to make sure this is toggled. So as long as your theme is set, and this is toggled, the, we're gonna make sure that the JavaScript and all the CSS is loaded to make sure that pop-up works anywhere on the front end for you. Then you're gonna have to add a custom link to the navigation. So it's actually uh, not a login page per se, it's actually just a short code, I mean a, uh, uh, an anchor tag like pound login, and we'll show it in a second, that triggers the pop-up from anywhere. So sometimes that's the confusion of, Where's my login page? Do I need to make a login page? No, you don't actually. You already have your WordPress login page and we're just gonna leverage that same exact form uh, through the pop-up. So, so let's take a quick look at that. This is our LearnDash settings. Uh, I'm on a 27 inch monitor. I'm sorry if it's a little small. Uh, but I went to Learn Dash LMS settings. I made sure that my template is selected. 
I made sure that my login and registration is toggled to on and I have a, lo a logo set. I also set my accent colors, progress colors, notifications, but if you're already using LearnDash, you probably already did that. So uh, that's really all you have to do in these settings is make sure your template's set, make sure your focus mode is set, and make sure your logo is set. Then we're gonna go over to the menu, appearance menu, and we're gonna add a custom link. It's right here. And if you don't see custom link, there's a chance that it's turned off underneath screen options in the top right corner. And you would type right pound login and you would write login. Realistically, this text here does not matter. And the login, pound login is what really matters. I already have it here, so we're not gonna add it. But you're gonna notice a couple little things extra. A CSS. Uh, input and a description and this extra thing which I'll talk about in a minute this is a bonus tip we'll get back to that so to make sure that you have your CSS class active and your descriptor uh, your description active you want to go back to screen options and they're going to be here uh, on the bottom row sometimes you don't see these people get confused how do I add my class it's you know go to screen options and just check the box and it'll add itself for you uh, and then the nice little thing here in our short code, the, sh the short code has labels. It has logged in and logged out labels. So you can say what you want for uh, the different states. So you don't have to worry about uh, having an extra link in the menu or swapping that based off conditional logic. Now I do recommend conditional logic and different functions for other options. Uh, example, is here where I don't have my account. And if I come over to the logged in version, I do have my account. And I'll show that in a second. But I wanna show you what happens now that I have the, the menu saved. Literally it's short code, class, and now anywhere that I have that menu, it's gonna work. And if I wanna register, I can register right from here, or I can log in. Since I'm, this is an incognito window, and this is me already logged in, so we're not gonna actually log in, but I, I promise you it, it works. I'm just gonna jump in really quick, James, to point out that all that information that James was showing with the, the short code, that's in our documentation. Mm -hmm. um, you can copy paste it. So it's, uh, it's just pretty simple for you to implement. And also, this is for adding the pop-up to the navigation at the top. This pop-up, when you activate it, will be automatically added to all your course pages. Um, there's a login link uh, in the top little information section. And so um, people can click on that and it will pop open. So you, there's nothing to set up there. This is just a setup if you want to add it to your uh, site navigation, which many people do. Correct. And here's the, the link. It's in the, in the slides. We'll make sure that the, wherever the uh, video is posted, a link to the slides will also be posted. So what I want to show you is one extra little bonus uh, tip here. Now, uh, I'll get the name of the plugin. I believe it's called uh, Nav Menu. Let me actually just look real fast to make sure. Yeah, it's called User Menu. Now, to be completely transparent, uh, Daniel Iser is my friend. He is the author of this plugin. I did not know that when I found the plugin or used it. So what this plugin does is gives you this nice little conditional logic dropdown added to your menu. So you can say, I want this, here we'll look at the My Account, because you can see that I do not have my account active on the logged out page. It says, uh, you can, who can see this link? I said, logged in users. Uh, which user roles can see this link? And since I didn't check it, they're all automatically allowed to see it. If I wanted to hide it, I would just say logged out users, or I can switch this radio button here or check boxes. But uh, it's a free plugin in the repo, completely free, no upsell, no premium version, but it gives you this ability to have any menu, the ability to hide it based off user role and level. Uh, I mean, user role and logged in or not logged in. Uh, completely free, uh, and I would highly recommend it because it's uh, nice to hide things like the My Account. So it's here and logged in. It's not here, not logged in. Now, sometimes you might want to show your My Account because you can have the login page there, other versions of sign up, you can have different versions of upsell. This is just an example. 
Okay, here's the settings that we just went over. This is a tip, I don't wanna to spend too much time here. I highly recommend this. Now here's the other options. Uh, well, you could have uh, let WooCommerce handle it. Uh, if you're selling through WooCommerce or EDD, they're also gonna sell uh, handle registration and you can just tie right into that and use those systems. But maybe you wanna go a little bit more custom or you don't wanna do all that effort. So let's go over some other options. Here's a short list as I joke. <laughs> you can do lots of different things to tailor and, and customize the way that you have user registration. Uh, and one thing that I, I want to take a step back to is I, I forgot to mention uh, about user registration. Use, user uh, sign up is not just the sign up process. You have to think about your forms. You have to think about the emails that get sent, the processes that go along with that, the branding that happens. Their user profile, if it's a uh, required login or some type of schooling or accreditation. We've had clients where in order to use the course, you have to have a very long sign-up forms, much longer than I would ever recommend, but you know they're needed. So you have to think about other ways to ex expand that and make sure that everything is working. Uh, I would highly recommend the last webinar talking about emails and making sure that you might have someone signing up for your account, but if the system emails are not being sent or being stuck in spam, you're not gonna have those users come back. You're gonna have a higher refund uh, uh, percentage. You're gonna have upside customers. So I, I highly recommend making sure emails are sending. That was the last webinar, uh, but that is a, a very big part of user registration. Uh, you also have uh, the actual sign up process and the design and all the emails, the, the wording that goes along with those in case you need to redirect or point someone to a course, you have the ability to modify those with the proper tools that WordPress gives you or a third party plugin. So some of the things we're gonna cover next are the ability to, uh, to swap a simple logo. Sometimes people are completely fine with the current default WordPress system, they just don't want the WordPress logo there. Uh, sometimes people wanna mask their URL. Uh, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this in a moment. Custom login pages, which are completely custom. They, they might be the same system, they might this the same pages, but they look completely different. You have things like login widgets and blocks. Uh, you have your, all your page builders that they support those things. Premium form builders, custom code, uh, email management is something that you should think about and also redirects once your users log in or uh, sign up. So let's go over some of these options. Now, the one thing I will say, I did forget the uncanny, uh, the uncanny toolkit. They're an amazing toolkit. I, I highly recommend using their uh, plugin for some of the features they offer a lot. It's sort of like Jetpack in a good way, meaning you can turn off and on different features. Uh, I'm also not affiliated with them, but there is a premium version of that that you, know, you might want to look at. But everything that I'm going to be showing today are all free versions that do also have premium versions. Uh, if you wanted to go that route, uh, you don't need to, and everything that we're gonna cover, you can do with the, the free versions just fine. The key too is to keep it simple. Uh, you wanna make sure you get that user account signed up and so they can come back or modify, or you can even do those return or the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the abandoned card emails. Sometimes people ask, well, WooCommerce is sending out the user registration before they're enrolled in the course because they haven't actually completed the order. So they don't have access to the course, but they do have access to WooCommerce, I mean to WordPress. And yes, that's true. Uh, and that's how the system is works and designed. Uh, they don't have actually, they don't actually have access to your course until it's completed, but that's because uh, the system captures that and sets that up. Uh, and you could technically go after abandoned card emails or, or with other services to help with that. Now, if you want to change that order, you can modify the way in the order in which those emails are sent or wait for a completed order. Uh, that's a much more advanced uh, webinar. Uh, happy to go into that at a different point if someone would like uh, to talk about that. Uh, I also would recommend maybe gamifying your uh, sign-up process, making it a fun assignment. Now, I know I just said keep it simple, but if you keep it simple to sign up, and then you use gamification to encourage to complete it or go back and fill it out. Uh, then you're getting the quick sign up and the 100% completed profile. 
if you make it part of an assignment or an extra credit thing, that's also fun or get to know your class depending on how you're structuring your courses. So uh, you can have a lot of fun with extending your profile once they're actually signed up. I would highly recommend to keep it simple. I know it's not always possible though. Okay, this is a, a very simple plugin that all it does is it swaps the WordPress logo for your logo. Uh, I used to, there used to be a bit simpler one. We've evolved, we don't have to be animals. We don't have to move copies of our logo to our WP config file. This one lets you actually select it. It's really simple. Uh, we'll look over it real fast and I'll show you what it does. So if we're looking at our login page here, we're gonna go over to our plugins and this is completely free as well. My WordPress login, we're gonna activate it. It should really be under appearance if it was my preference. I don't think something that controls the aesthetics should be out on its own, but it's a fantastic free little plugin. Uh, I selected the image. I can set the image heights and any of that if I wanted to. Hit update. This has my settings from earlier when I was testing. I come over to this login page, refresh. Now we have our logo. So maybe you just want this really simple thing. You just want to leverage the WordPress system and then have your logo there to help with brand awareness. You can do this. It's going to pick up your logo already. It's free. It'll take you two minutes. Okay. Next plugin. This is a, you can actually take it a step further and really design your login pages. Now I know login isn't really part of registration, but I feel they're, they come hand in hand. And if you can design these pages that complete the brand and you have a returning customer, these also have links to sign up, which you know, in theory are the same thing. Uh, so I'm including these as part of the, as part of the uh, webinar today. As far as the theme, my login and custom login pages, uh, they're both fine. There's also the uh, login press. A lot of time on AppSumo, the login press is running a really good deal. Uh, no affiliate there. I do like, personally, out of the three, the custom login pages uh, customizer, the, the custom login page customizer. It's really simple. You can add your own custom CSS. They give you some templates to start. Uh, these are examples here. So let's go ahead and turn that plugin on. Uh, again, completely free, downloaded from the repo, uh, and we're gonna theme our login. I think it's worth mentioning as you go to that plugin right now, James, that the reason that we're using plugins for this is that the login page and the registration page in WordPress, you can't really easily get to it. Um, it's not like something you could use a page builder for. I know um, for folks that are used to using Elementor or Beaver Builder or whatever, um, it can't really touch those pages. And that's why there, there are these plugins available. Again, this is just optional too, because we have the Learn Dash version, you know, with that pop-up that James went over. Um, but this is for actually customizing the pages that are generated by WordPress. Uh, correct. And also we'll talk about that in a moment too. And that's another option. You don't have to use the, the actual Learn uh, WordPress pages. Uh, using a page builder or widgets or, or uh, you can actually have a login anywhere, just like the pop-up is. You can style your own login page. Uh, you can make a login, you know, and publish it, add your form, style it to make it look just like this with Beaver Builder, Elementor, uh, Gutenberg, Divi, WP, you know, Baker, all those. You can accomplish this too on any individual page use redirect plugins or go and modify your emails uh, to make sure that they're sending to those login pages. And you can totally do that without the need of an, excuse me, of an additional plugin. I just think something like this is a good quick starting point uh, for when you're in a hurry or something, or is a, uh, a cheaper project or you don't want to have to go in and, and code it from the ground up. I find that these are a really simple solution. Uh, I can go in here and select this, hit publish, and I turned off the other logo plugin, by the way, so they don't conflict. And now we have like a styled, really nice looking uh, login that doesn't necessarily feel so much like WordPress. And I, I can come in here and change the logo and stuff through this plugin too. Uh, they offer that customization. But, um, well, let's keep going.
So masking URLs. Uh, this comes up every once in a while in the Facebook group. I don't want it to say uh, WP-login, or I don't want it to say WordPress in my URL. Uh, last week, we gave a tip about how to change the word uh, from WordPress at your domain email address. So if you go to the end of last week, uh, last webinar on emails, we go over that filter and how to change the actual from email so it doesn't say WordPress if that's what you're looking to do. If you're looking to rename or change or hide all those default uh, WordPress pages or use your page builder, build a login page, and then use this tool to redirect to that login, you could totally do that. Now, if the only reason you're doing this is for security, you're wasting your time. I do not recommend uh, trying to do security by uh, obscurity. You're just, uh, it's not worth it. Uh, WordPress has a huge community. Uh, if something happens, it's gonna be patched. We're gonna know about it quickly. I wouldn't stress about that side of it. If it's purely brand aesthetics, go for it. And again, we're talking about the page builders. You know, all of them can make your own page builders. I started searching for uh, the best widgets or the best uh, blocks or the best uh, Gutenberg uh, add-ons. And all of them do this. So instead of making a big list, I, I didn't. Uh, maybe we can have a conversation in the Facebook group about what Elementor, uh, Beaver Builder, Gutenberg add-ons we like when we're building out our content views. Uh, but honestly, they all do it. So if you do want to add your own login view anywhere, you can. And then leveraging some conditional logic, short codes, or some other uh, plugins, you can even show hide or show things there. Uh, earlier, I mentioned conditional logic. A lot of your premium themes, once you upgrade, uh, the premium page builders, once you upgrade, and if you're using a conditional logic plugin, obviously, would give you the ability to set things based off user roles, logged in, not logged in. Uh, There's I also would, that in Learn Dash too with the student and visitor shortcodes. You're right. Or uh, blocks. Thanks. So the last thing that we want to talk about uh, for as far as the larger add-ons go is an actual whole profile builder. So one thing that WordPress does by default is it keeps your profile in the admin looking thing, even subscribers get that version uh, without any actual uh, plugins or post view in the WP admin to modify their profile. If you're using WooCommerce, you get a little bit of that in the front end, your user address and, and your address and email and stuff like that. If you were to use a profile builder, you then can take that a step further and have your entire profile uh, edited and in customized on sign up uh, throughout the sign up process or and have all of that editable in the front end. This is big when you're dealing with um, of, of more, uh, well, I've had to deal with this in a medical environment where you had to do training and everyone had to fill out a lot of information and upload images to prove who they are in order to take the course. And we had to have an extended profile builder. So I've used this plugin. Um, there is a premium version of this. The pro, uh, the uh, free version is just fine. The only issue that I personally have with this plugin is it has a drag and drop builder that it's its own version. And I'm not a big fan of a bunch of plugins creating their own interface to do something if it's if there's already another way they can do it. So it's a little bit disjointing compared to how some other things work. But you have the ability to have an entire profile what you want, don't want, what's required, username, you know, address, bio, if you had an entire classroom a profile you're trying to fill out on sign up. Now, a large registration will slow down or cut your signups, and it will probably create a higher bounce rate. I would recommend a basic sign up and then editing or improving your profile once you've uh, actually signed up. So let's turn on this plugin real fast so I can just show you what, what it does out of the box. The nice thing about this plugin, as soon as I turn it on, it's going, the first time you turn it on, it's gonna ask you, 
do you already have pages created or do you want me to create the pages? Sort of like if you run through the WooCommerce uh, edit, um, wizard when you first sign up. I already set those pages, so it's not going to ask me, but it was set here. I click this view for uh, your form page. And now that this is on, I turned off this plugin. So this will go back to normal. But now this is our registration page. Using that other plugin, the uh, profile builder, we now have an entire registration page that has all these details on the front if we didn't want to use the plugin. Uh, this will tie directly into your user profile and extend your WordPress uh, user. You also have a normal generic login, but everything has that. And then if you were actually, uh, they also have the same exact view of this, but for an editing view. So if you did want to extend this, you have the ability, uh, this is what it gives you automatically. I do feel this is a lot uh, to ask on, a, on an initial sign up. Okay, yeah, we've gone over the long forms. I would recommend having a registration first and then allowing the form to save so you don't have, uh, you're not stressing them out. They can come back and finish at their own time. Have it in smaller chunks. Then you also have the ability to do everything that we've talked about with every premium form tool. Uh, we personally have a Gravity Forms add-on, so you can use Gravity Forms and enroll people directly into a course with LearnDash. Uh, they also have a very nice user registration. That's my personal premium go-to option when I have to build a, a fancy uh, login. It's been Gravity Forms for years, but I've been using them. They were, that was actually my first premium plugin almost uh, 10 years ago plus. So uh, I have a special place in my heart for them, but this is not an affiliate link. <laughs> the rest of them are also just as wonderful. I've included a WP Beginners article on how to create user registration with WP Forms. Uh, WP Forms is added if you set up Astra uh, in the uh, Learn Dash Academy uh, through the starter template. So this is a uh, tutorial to guide you right through that process if you wanted to use a normal form to do it. And honestly, every premium form uh, plugin is going to offer this feature. So we don't need to waste too much time there. Uh, the nice thing about having your custom form or extending the form itself is you have the ability to sign someone up or offer the ability to have them sign up for your newsletter. Your mailing list is one of the most valuable things you can be uh, creating and growing as you're in business and in offering courses because someone might be interested now but can't afford it. Uh, so if you can continue to uh, communicate with, with them, keep them involved and interested, that's going to constantly grow those warm leads over time and those that effort's going to pay off. I highly recommend whatever way that you do have your sign up or with selling your courses, find a way to offer your newsletter, at least in your footer or somewhere in your site if it's not going to be on your user registration. And then you always have the ability to do custom code. Everything that we've shown today is all using hooks and filters put in place by WordPress. Uh, so they're all just leveraging the default system, but making it a little easier and giving it a WYSIWYG environment. So you don't, we don't have to program as much, but you can. Uh, we've done this several times using a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields and extending the default uh, WooCommerce user profile and the WordPress user profile. If you wanted to buy a, an additional plugin, there's also a WooCommerce Custom Fields plugin uh, it's like $49 that you could use to also extend that with a pretty uh, well-documented API if you wanted to go more custom and, and less, you know, directly out of the box. One thing I would highly recommend, if you're going to go in and change things, uh, if you're going to redirect stuff or change the links, or I would make sure that whatever emails you're using are sending through the system reflect that. If you change a core system a link, make sure that your email templates reflect that. I also don't recommend changing core uh, links. Uh, this is just an example. There is much better other plugins that offer this, that let you manage the time the emails are sent, the orders they're sent. This one is just gonna let you uh, modify some of the text and the color. Uh, but again, do a quick search. I mean, there's a much 
better option. Uh, this is a good option, but there's so many that I didn't want to look like I was picking favorites. This will let you pick some colors and modify them. If you want to spend a little bit of money, you can do a lot with the built-in emails. Um, again, I recommend watching last week's webinar to make sure that your emails are sending though. Uh, make sure it's going through SMTP and not your default PHP settings. I have uh, two nice little redirect plugins. One is just a generic redirect plugin I recommend using whenever you modify or change pages. Whenever we change something, or uh, we always go in and modify and add a redirect if it's been a page that's been up a while uh, or even a couple of days just to help with SEO. That is not really a login registration thing, but the plugin redirects, uh, redirection, a great uh, plugin to help maintain your SEO uh, and any type of uh, performance that you're doing. Now, the Pete's login redirect is one of the longest, um, one of the oldest plugins around, and it's updated pretty frequently. That'll actually let you set uh, URL login logouts based off of user roles uh, if you want to control how students can log in, uh, where admins go. You can say, I want a subscriber always to go to the course page, and as an admin, I always want to go to the WooCommerce order page on login because I want to log in, I want to see my stats. Okay, uh, kill switch. Now this is uh, part of a user experience. I personally feel that no matter what you're doing, no matter your design, I need to be able to log out with one click. If something bad happens or if I, don't, if I need to hurry or if I need to go, I don't wanna do multiple clicks to make sure that my session is closed. Uh, an example of this is in the logged in site here, I have logged out. I also know on my accounts page, I also have a logout button. I highly recommend having multiple logout buttons. I know we have one through uh, you know, your actual avatar on the top right corner. Not everyone keeps this bar. And again, that's a hover. I, I'm, again, strong believer. If you're doing something that has to do with testing, personal data, or anything like that, uh, I call it a kill switch, instant logout, no matter what you, where you are in the user interface make sure you have at least one logout. That's a, that's a tip, that's just my advice. Uh, and that's it for the presentation. I'd love to take some questions, uh, if there's any, any feedback. Yeah, thanks James for going through this, uh, kind of talking about the Learn Dash, what we offer in terms of the registration and login with the pop-up modal. Again, the documentation outlines what James covered, but then also different plugins and options available to you. As you can see, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. You can get pretty in depth if you'd like. Uh, you can get pretty custom with the registrations, um, but you can also keep it simple. I agree with keeping things simple personally, uh, but uh, you know, to each their own. I know some people have training programs that are a little bit more elaborate because it's for a certification of a certain industry. So they need to collect a lot more information up front during the registration process. Uh, many ways to do that. I know Gravity Forms is a, is a popular one. Um, but if you have any questions, um, we are happy to answer a few right now if you want to post them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, I don't see any coming in quite yet. A couple thank yous coming in. Thanks, guys, for, nice. for that. Um, yeah. if you can always ask questions as well in the Facebook group. Um, but hopefully this gets people off on the right path in terms of what is available to them and uh, they can dig in a little bit further. But um, yeah. I want to say one thing real fast. I know that's a lot, but actually it's a lot of little things. This could be a, a great video that's broken down into like five minute chunks because realistically, if you needed to use the learn dash pop-up, that's a two to three minute thing. You just have to add the short code in the class. If you want to add it to your menu, you want to make sure it's on the short code's going to work anywhere. So I, I, I think that overall this can be overwhelming but I was just trying to show a large variety or different options you could do. So when watching this or, or re-watching this, don't try to do it all. Some of those could work together, but this is really just uh, multiple small options based on the path that you want to take selling or creating registration. There's a question or a couple questions coming in. So somebody wanting to know if we, you have to use a membership plugin that high level answer to that. Uh, you don't have to use one with Learn Dash, but you may want to. But that is a good point, uh, James, that membership plugins often come with a registration mm -hmm. slash, um, I guess, login component as well. Yeah, exactly. And if you're selling like WooCommerce memberships, 
that's why I had like the first option is like you could just let Woo handle it <laughs> because during your sign up process at WooCommerce and you're selling WooCommerce subscriptions or WooCommerce membership, that sign up process will create a user account. If you're using EDD to sell your courses or uh, paid memberships pro, they all have their own versions of registration. You don't have to do this. In fact, I think we will have more options uh, on registration in the future because there is so many ways of doing it. And I'd be happy to say, let's do one uh, the EDD way, or let's do one paid memberships pro if that's something that the audience would, would like to see. Yeah, that's great. And just with even let's consider the membership option. So the registration in that context, let's say it's paid memberships pro, which is a free membership plugin, which we have a free integration with, uh, somebody purchases a membership level or integration would then enroll that, um, individual into any course that's associated with that membership level. You can still use the learn dash login pop-up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can just use the registration component, which is like the checkout, the buying experience of that paid memberships pro of that plugin but the pop-up works with, with anything. So you can use the, the login component. You can turn off registration so you won't see that half that says like register, register an account. That will be gone. It'll just be a pop-up of the username and password. So you could use both of those in conjunction with one another. In fact, I think most people do do that because mm -hmm. you know, they want to handle the registration or the sign up through that membership plugin if they're using one. But they want to leverage what we have in place for the actual login, you know, for when that person comes back at a later date. I completely agree. And I forgot one key point to why I use the Gravity Forms user, user registration. The default WordPress system, without having a Kismet on or a reCAPTCHA tool or something like that, you're going to get a tremendous amount of spam. Uh, so in order to have the registration work, you'd have to have your user registration on if you're using uh, just the default system. If you're using WooCommerce, you can turn that off. Uh, but I like to use Gravity Forms because I can turn off the default registration system, have an invisible honeypot that's going to block all my spam through, you know, that premium Gravity Form, and then I can have that user automatically created, and it still generates all the same emails, and now I'm blocking you know, all those wasted spam emails that I was getting before. No. I could probably block the spam the other way, but that is a bonus of turning that system off and using your own. Thanks so for coming in and saying some kind words here. James, wondering what future webinars we're gonna have uh, consider. James, post the ideas in the Facebook group. We got this directly from the Facebook group, the previous one, Facebook group. Actually, all these have come from the group, uh, just questions being asked or even just suggestions um, you can post in there. Um, yeah. David saying this was great. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, some requests for easy digital downloads and how that could work with Learn Dash. I know we did one, I think, on WooCommerce, so maybe that would make mm -hmm. sense to talk about easy digital downloads or EDD uh, and how that flow works when uh, you know setting up, the, I guess, the the purchase process, purchase uh, process slash registration. I'm a big fan of EDD. That and their uh, affiliate WP, which they make, and. Uh, Mr. Content Pro, they, they make a good set of, of plugins up there. Uh, and uh, Pippin, I, I have yet to try his beer, um, but I know he, him and his brother started uh, brewing beer uh, a lot. I think almost professionally. I know this is recorded, so I, I, I don't want to overspeak, but I think they are opening a, a microbrewery. Um, I think you might be right. Yeah, at least that's what I heard. Yeah. So if you like software and you like beverages, I suppose uh, take a look at their stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, go ahead. I was just going to say a couple that I had is, you know, a couple in the back burner when we don't have any ideas is, is I already have one planned out on, on Zapier uh, for a webinar on that. Same thing for uh, certifications. I want to do a, one on designing and creating your own certification uh, your, uh, after completing a course. And then also the memberships. And uh, I definitely want to do one on groups coming up. Uh, groups is going to be a big one, I think. Yeah, as a little teaser, groups, uh, there's some exciting things coming around Learn Dash groups. I've been seeing the work that's being done. It's getting um, some more muscle. And uh, I think people are really going to like it. So that would be a great thing to cover. Uh, probably on the heels of a pretty big Learn Dash release that we are working on. So uh, with that teaser, I'm going to actually end this uh, call now because we want to give people their time back. We like to keep these nice and short. 
If you have any ideas, please submit them in the Facebook group. Thank you all so much. Uh, please stay healthy and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks everyone.